video project with the virus virology 416 Dr. Ramirez's class by Gladys Rodriguez targeted audience at high school students. Hi guys, today you guys are going to learn about what is a virus. A virus is a submicroscopic obligate intracellular parasitic pathogen comprising of genetic material surrounded by a protective protein coat. Wow, that is a very long textbook definition of what a virus is, but that's okay. I'm going to go ahead and help you. We're going to break it down into three separate parts so that we have a better understanding of what a virus is. The first part of the definition states an obligate intracellular parasite. All that means is that a virus has to be inside a cell in order to replicate itself and make copies of itself. As you recall from a biology course, cells have all of the necessary machinery to replicate themselves. Viruses do not have that, and so that's why they need to infect a cell so that they can go ahead and make copies of themselves. The second part of the definition states genetic material. All that means is whether a virus has RNA or DNA like you and I do. The third part of the definition states a protective protein coat. All that means is that all viruses have a capsid. The capsid is just another word for saying coat or shell. Now that we know the definition of a virus, let's go ahead and classify them. There are four different ways in which we classify a virus. The first is by size. Viruses come in many different sizes. We have this guy right here, which is a zombie virus. We have COVID-19. We have this other virus right here. And we have more. As you see, there are all different sizes and shapes. The second way we classify a virus is by shape. There are four different shapes a virus can have. That is helical. You can think of that as coil. A great example of a helical virus is this Ebola virus. The second is polyhedron. Or icosahedron. All this means is many sides. A great example of a polyhedron virus is this HPV, which has many different sides that make it up. The third is spherical, which just means a circle. The last is complex, which is actually a combination of helical and polyhedron. A great example of a virus is this bacteriophage, which has a head that is polyhedron and this portion right here, which is helical. The third way we classify a virus is whether it's enveloped, whether it's enveloped or not. For this one, this virus has a capsid and it has its DNA inside. You can think of this one as a naked virus versus a virus that is enveloped. It, of course, still has a capsid with its DNA or RNA inside, but It's enveloped by a lipid membrane, which it gets from its host. The fourth way we classify a virus is by genome. Does it have RNA or DNA? Is it single-stranded? Or is it double-stranded? There is actually seven different genome types a virus can have. 
These are the seven genome types a virus has. It can be double-stranded DNA, or it can be gapped double-stranded DNA. Now that we know what a virus is, I'm going to tell you guys a fun fact. Did you guys know that 8% of our genome comes from ancient viruses that infected our previous ancestors? Pretty cool, right? Viruses, or virology, which is the study of viruses, is an important field to study so that we have a better understanding the role that they play in our daily lives and so that we have an understanding of our genetic evolution, such as HIV. We have all heard of HIV, right? HIV is able to stick to our cells and infect us. It does this by the help of a protein called a synthesis. Pretty cool, right? Now, when a woman is pregnant, the baby is in an embryonic sac that sticks to the uterine wall and keeps the baby's blood separate from the mother's. Otherwise, the mother's immune system will attack the baby and there would be no baby. Last year, Dr. Edward Chung published his research that that same protein that helps HIV stick to our cells is the same protein that helps the embryonic sac stick to the uterine wall. Pretty cool, right? Also, viruses are in our gut. That's right, they are in our gut. They actually infect the bacteria that we have in our gut. The environment in our gut is called the microbiome. Now, the Welcome Sanger Institute, at the beginning of this year, discovered 140,000 viruses from healthy individuals that were in their gut. Pretty cool, right? Now, most of the viruses that they discovered that were inside our gut are actually some are retroviruses. The other half, they have no idea where they came from or they have ever seen. So that's pretty cool. So it's very important to understand viruses because they are around us, they are inside of us, and they have helped our evolution. I hope you found this video helpful and that you have an understanding of what a virus is. Thank you.